Hello everyone. So now it's a, it's a webinar about uh, the new uh, Squash TM inter user interface, which is uh, released uh, since uh, four months. Uh, but uh, we will uh, do a demo to explain and present to you uh, the, the Squash TM uh, interface, but also the Squash TM uh, software in general. So if you have uh, no, no idea uh, about this uh, software, it will be explained to, to you in the webinar. First of all, uh, we are the speakers today. So I'm Thibault Le Faucher, Squash Communication Manager, and I'm uh, with Marion. Hi, everyone. Which, uh, who uh, will uh, do uh, for you the, um, the demo. I uh, begin with the presentation of uh, Enix, which is the company uh, which is creating uh, and publishing Squash as a project. Squash is an open source project developed by Enix. So it's uh, been since uh, 2010 and the beginning of the project Enix, uh, stays and remains the, the main contributor and the exclusive uh, publisher of the Squash suite. So uh, it will include also uh, other modules that I will uh, present to you after. Uh, Enix is a, is a key company in software com quality consulting. So we support key account customers through um, services in uh, consulting and uh, implementation, but also uh, we, we provide a functional and technical uh, expertise on, uh, on each part of the software testing process. Enix is a, is a French IT comp company uh, with activities uh, divided uh, between um, test management uh, mainly, but also QA consulting, training with a uh, software uh, quality uh, school in uh, in France also, and uh, the the publishing and the development of Squash. Uh, we are com we are with um, uh, uh, two two hundred and eighty people, and uh, and our um, our expansion is a. Uh, is regular since uh, since uh, 1999. Uh, our expertise in uh, software quality is uh, in uh, different uh, aspects. So we organize and animate uh, the software quality club uh, since 2005. The last session uh, was uh, the last month, and uh, we invited uh, GitLab or uh, Atlassian uh, during sessions to to speak about uh, software quality and our um, Squash uh, softwares. We have uh, also a GitLab and Jira Expertise Center because we are now a gold solution partner of Atlassian and select uh, select partner of GitLab. It means that uh, in France, uh, uh, mainly we, we can uh, sell uh, their products as, uh, as official uh, provider. Uh, we also have uh, some expertise in, uh, in open source uh, foundation, such as a robot framework which is used uh, with our module uh, Squash TM. And uh, I mentioned it before, uh, we are also the founders of uh, the Software Quality School in France, uh, where uh, you can um, find a new job in the software quality uh, uh, sector. So now is the presentation of, uh, of our, uh, our Squash modules, uh, which are three, three of them. Uh, the first one is uh, the one we, we will explain to you uh, how to use it uh, today. And uh, it's a Squash TM, TM like uh, the test management. And uh, it, uh, it is to manage and monitor your manual tests in agile or, or traditional mode using the methodologies chosen by company like TMAP, PSTQB in French and uh, SAFE. Next, uh, we have uh, Squash Autumn, which is a module to automate tests uh, and uh, in industrialize your automation process and the execution of uh, automated tests. Then you have Squash DevOps, uh, which is a, a module uh, that uh, allows you to extend your CI CD pipeline for continuous testing. These two last models, uh, we, we, we will not uh, explain uh, more about it today, but uh, you can ask your question. Uh, to our uh, uh, mailing address that I will uh, give us give you uh, after the, the webinar, and uh, we will uh, explain to you more if needed. The Squash TM features are available uh, also uh, for in uh, two versions. The first one is the community, which is free and based on uh, an open source uh, 
uh, core, and uh, it includes a lot of uh, features of the Squash TM uh, features. And uh, the other uh, version of Squash TM is a premium version, uh, which is available uh, in a commercial uh, commercial way and uh, allows, uh, for instance, you to uh, to use uh, some other bug trackers like Jira, Redmine, RTC, or Tulip, and uh, use also uh, Squash uh, in a in an agile way with a Jira Cloud or Jira Data Center. And uh, you have all the details of this uh, features list on our website, squashtestpoint.com. And I will uh, let you the address in the, in the chat just after. Last but not least, uh, the Squash calendar. So here you have the, the release calendar of, uh, of our modules. So as you can see, the new user interface of Squash TM was released in July uh, with the 2.0 uh, version. And uh, we have already a new one, a new version in uh, August. And the next one will be uh, the 3.0 in uh, November or December 2021. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Squash Autumn and DevOps um, modules are new for us. So the first one uh, were uh, released in um, in uh, April, and uh, as it's uh, in, uh, as there are some new models, uh, we are releasing uh, very uh, fastly uh, some new release, and uh, the next one is also in November. That's all for me, and uh, I will let the, the microphone to to Marion, we, who will uh, show you the application. Thank you. Thanks, Thibault. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. You should, you should see my screen. So yeah, um, today for this webinar, we are going to take a look at uh, Squash TM new user interface. Uh, it has been completely revamped uh, earlier this year. Um, and so it's now based on the Angular technology. It has the same features as uh, before, as previous versions. Uh, but with this uh, new UI, we, we try to um, improve uh, the ergonomy of the app. And we also uh, enhanced uh, some, uh, some of, of, uh, of the existing features. So we're going to see what's, uh, what's new. So. This is the, the login page uh, where we can still uh, customize uh, a message uh, by the administrator. And then we can log in on, uh, on the app. So we're going to do this now. And we are going to access uh, the home page uh, of Squash TM where we can also uh, customize a message or we can display a custom dashboard. So it doesn't change. Uh, it, it was already like that before. We can still do it uh, in, this, uh, in this new version. Wherever we are on the app, uh, we will always see on the left side uh, this uh, navigation bar uh, where we will be able to access uh, the different workspaces uh, in Squash. So here they are. Uh, we have three main workspaces, uh, the requirements workspace, the test cases workspace, and the campaigns workspace. They it, uh, all have a different color, so it's easier for the, the user to know where, uh, where they are with, uh, with this, uh, uh, this color. We also have a, a reporting workspace uh, when we can track all the uh, testing process through uh, indicators. And then uh, from this uh, navigation bar, we have access to the administration workspace uh, if we have uh, high enough uh, authorization. Uh, from there, we can manage users, uh, projects, uh, custom fields, and so on. We also have access to the online uh, documentation that has been completely uh, redone. Uh, it's now uh, both in French and English, uh, so you can check it if you uh, wonder how to do something in Squash uh, or to check the, the functionalities. We have the release notes also on, uh, online on this, uh, on this website. And then on this uh, navbar, we have access to uh, my account if you want to, to change your, your password, for example. So we're going to start with the requirement workspace. So 
uh, every workspace uh, on Squash uh, have the same layout. Uh, there is a library uh, on the left and the consultation page of the selection and the, the library on the right. So it doesn't change uh, from, the, from the previous version. We still have those two uh, uh, elements. Uh, in this library, so Squash is a, is a multi-project application. So in this library, you will see uh, all the projects that you have uh, authorization uh, on. So they are displayed in blue here that you can see. And it's possible uh, to apply a, a filter on this uh, project uh, to display only the, the, the one you are in, interested in. Um, then uh, in this project, you will find uh, you will be able to organize your, uh, your requirements in three uh, uh, of, of elements. So um, you can uh, add uh, folders that you can see here. And then you have the requirements. Uh, so you can really organize as you want uh, your requirement uh, repository. So the requirements are here. Uh, this one that I'm, uh, that I'm pointing. You can see some uh, icons uh, on, the, on the left of the requirements uh, that will give you info uh, about uh, the attributes of the requirements. So you have info about the criti criticality, about the category of the requirements, about its status, whether uh, it's uh, linked to test case or not, whether it has a description of or not. So th those uh, icons are new, uh, are a new feature of, uh, of, the, of the new uh, uh, Squash user interface. Um, and the idea was with one look, we can know um, uh, what we have uh, in our repository. Um, on the top of the of the library, we have uh, button actions. Uh, those are the same as before. Sorry, so you can uh, add elements, uh, copy, paste, delete them uh, from the from the library. Uh, Excel files. You can sort, uh, choose the, the the order in which the the elements will be uh, displayed in the in the library, and then you have uh, a search feature that we are going to talk uh, later in uh, in this demo. So that's it for the for the library. Uh, now on the consultation page. So this is a consultation page of uh, a requirement that I have selected in the in the library. So on the top of the page, uh, we're going to find uh, the name of the requirement. It's a uh, reference that is used to to sort the requirements in the library in alphabetical order. We are also going to see in, in this top section uh, of the page uh, the main attributes of the requirement. So we have the status here and the criticality. And then we're going to be able to access to the attachments if there are some. So this is this little icon here. I have a, a, a number uh, on, on the icon that tells me that I have two attachments uh, linked to this uh, requirement and to see them. There's a, a drawer uh, here that uh, that appears, and from there I can uh, add, delete, or uh, download the, the attachments. And drag and drop it's uh, it's supported now. It's a it's a new feature. Then we will uh, find on the rest of the page all the information uh, about the, the requirements that are uh, dispatched dispatched in uh, in several uh, sections, uh, depending on the type of uh, info. And we will be able to access all these sections with uh, anchors that we have on the left side here. So to have a quick access to this info, we just have to click on the different anchors and we'll go uh, straight to the, to the section. So the first section here is the main information uh, about the, the requirement. In there, we will find the, the, the main attributes. Uh, those are system fields of, uh, of Squash TM. So the status, the criticality, and the category um, that we will find here. And we can also add uh, custom fields 
uh, sprint and labels, for example, are custom fields that I've uh, added on my project, on my requirements, if I want to, to uh, put some more information on my requirements. These custom fields can be uh, tags, um, lists, uh, text, uh, numbers, dates. Uh, so we can pretty much do a, a lot of things. And then we have the description. So we have a few of this type of, uh, of uh, fields uh, in Squash. Those are rich text fields where you can add uh, uh, colors, uh, put some text in bold, add list, uh, tables. So you can, you can uh, type uh, whatever you want here. To edit those fields, uh, it's still you just still have to, to click on it, uh, edit it, and, and valid uh, your your changes. So these are the, the main information. Then we have uh, some uh, coverage indicators, uh, whether the requirement is covered by test case or not, and whether uh, the, the requirement is validated after the, the execution of the test case. Um, so we try to, to make it more visual in this new version with, uh, with colors that you can see here. We then have uh, the link uh, to the test cases here. Um, so this is the list of the test cases that are linked to the, to the requirements uh, that you can see in, in, this, uh, in this table. We um, changed the, the way to the, the mechanism to, to link a test case to, to a, a requirement. You now have the, the test case library that displays on a drawer on the right of the page. And to link test cases to a requirement, you just have to drag and drop uh, from the library, uh, from the test case library, uh, one or several test cases to the consultation page of the requirement and the association is made. Um, Squash is a also, so Squash is a multi-project uh, uh, application. It's also um, an inter-project application, which means you can link a test case from another project to a requirement uh, of, uh, of a first project. So I think that's about it for the requirement workspace. We are now going to go to the test cases workspace. So it's pretty much the same layout, uh, only the, the color changes. So we know where, where we are. Uh, so we still have the um, library on the left, the consultation page on the right. Um, the features on the, on the library, the action buttons are pretty much the same as for the, the requirements. Um, on the consultation page, we have uh, the execution status, uh, the last execution status of the, of the test case. So we, we know um, directly uh, if it has been passed or, or, or failure. And then we have the main information of the test case, with the attributes, main attributes and, and custom fields uh, if needed. We have the description, so it's a bit like the, the requirements. We have the link to the to, uh, to the requirements. It's the same uh, info that we had in the uh, in the requirement workspace. Uh, the, associ the association mechanism works uh, is the same. So with a drag and drop. And we're going to go to the steps. So th this is uh, the, the prerequisite and uh, steps uh, screen. Uh, we have. Uh, remade this uh, this screen uh, before it was a table now the uh, the steps are displayed in in different blocks um, that you can see here uh, we put the the prerequisite before the steps it was on a different page before so we we reunited them uh, together it was uh, it was more uh, logical and so now we can find the prerequisite here followed by the the list of uh, of steps uh, so each step has uh, an action and, uh, and an expected result field. We can also put some more information like uh, attachments, uh, custom fields, or link to uh, requirements. And those uh, additional information are displayed uh, below the, the action and expected uh, result field.
Um, when you hover uh, each step, um, you will find this uh, uh, button uh, action to add a new step, uh, copy past, delete uh, the step, and uh, you have some, some more action to add a, a requirement, uh, an attachment, and, uh, and so on. Um, it's possible to, uh, uh, there's a, um, a feature where you're able to, to collapse uh, all the steps. Uh, it's very useful to have a, an overview of your, uh, of your test case. You have the first words of uh, each step, so you can know uh, what, uh, what's in them. So it's very useful for that, and it's also very useful if you want to reorganize your steps. Um, you can just from the from this view uh, drag and drop uh, one step uh, on an, another place uh, to to reorganize your your different steps. And then you can of course expand all your steps uh, to have the the full view. Um, Squash also supports uh, in these uh, in these steps and also in the prerequisite uh, parameters. So you can add uh, some parameters uh, on your steps, like this, uh, for example. This login and password are parameters. Um, that so you can you can put them in the in the steps or in the prerequisite, and then you will be able to manage them in the parameters and data sets section uh, so you will see your different parameters here in each column and you will be able to define a value uh, for each parameters through data sets that you can find uh, in lines here so before we had two um, uh, two different sections one for the parameters one for the data sets now we've put it in just one uh, it's clearer we can uh, we can see both uh, um, just one look um, and the idea is when you when you will be exec when you will be executing your your tests uh, with parameters the parameter that you've defined in the steps will be replaced by the value that you've uh, entered for for each data set um, so i think that's it for the test case uh, we're now gonna see the the search feature so that's a feature we uh, that we have on the on the requirement workspace on the test cases workspace and also on the campaign workspace so it existed before uh, but we really improved the at least we think we improved uh, the ergonomy on this uh, on this new uh, version of uh, of squash tm so now we have the uh, we have a single page uh, for the for the search um, uh, feature, uh, on the left we have all the criteria, uh, the, the search criteria, and on the right we have uh, the the table with the search results. So um, uh, for the criteria we have uh, a perimeter that can be a squash uh, a squash project or several projects. Or we can also have a, a perimeter where we're going to uh, select a folder, for example, in the in the test case library. So this is a new feature. Uh, before we could just uh, do a research from a, a project. Uh, now we can really uh, pick uh, from where we want to to do our research and be more precise. So once we've set the, the perimeter, uh, we can add uh, criteria. So we have a button here, and we have a list with all the criteria. So we can do a research about pretty much anything, about uh, test case uh, information, about attributes, about uh, custom fields, about uh, association with uh, requirements, for example, about uh, the content of, of, the, of the test case. So we have a lot of... Uh, of options here and so to add a, a criteria we just have to select it on the list and then select uh, select a value so for example if i want to do a, a research about uh, uh, test cases with uh, approved status i just have to pick status and then approve and my results 
are automatically uh, updated. I don't have to uh, click on, uh, on search uh, every time. Uh, if I put another uh, attribute here, uh, my, uh, my results are, are updated. So we have a now a, a dynamic uh, search feature. And we can uh, export the, the results uh, in uh, Excel uh, format. And from there, we can also uh, bulk edit some, uh, some fields. So another feature that, uh, that we have in all the workspaces, um, when we select uh, a folder, a project, or several elements in the library, we have um, a dashboard uh, that displays on the, on the consultation page. Um, so this one is a, is a dashboard automatically uh, generated by Scratch TM. We can replace it if we want with a custom dashboard um, if we want to have specific indicators. So far, so this one is the is the one generated by Squash. Uh, it will give you info about uh, association uh, with requirements, so you can see uh, which uh, test cases are not uh, linked to to requirements. You will be able to see their status, uh, the weight of the test cases, and the number of the of the of the steps for each uh, for each test cases. And when you click on one portion of the of, of a chart, you will access the search results with the with the the, the test cases uh, that corresponds to the to the to the chart. So I think that's it for this part. We are going to go to the campaign workspace. So still same layout, uh, different color, same uh, same features on the on the library. So in Squash, in in this library, it's a bit different. We have several elements that we can uh, that we can add. First of all, we have the campaign. So in Squash, uh, a campaign is defined by all the test cycles that are necessary to uh, to validate a, a version of an application until it's released and below the campaign we have the iteration that each iteration will correspond to one of this cycle and it is the, uh, the iteration uh, that's in the iteration that we will have the, the test plan uh, and that we'll be able to, to run the different tests. Uh, so first of all, uh, either on the campaign of our iteration, we will find uh, dashboards, uh, for example, the, the test case uh, execution status. So we have, uh, we, we have it here. Uh, we have other uh, indicators and we have statistics here uh, for each, uh, each iteration. Then we have the execution plan. So it doesn't change a lot from uh, from before. Uh, so in this execution plan, we will find the, 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 all the tests that will we have to to run uh, to uh, to complete this uh, this iteration. Uh, so we have some uh, some information. We have the um, the name of the of the test case, for example, its weight, its if it's linked to a data set or not, uh, its status, uh, the, the login of the and name of the, the user who, who run the test. And we can uh, filter this, uh, this execution plan uh, to just see some of, uh, some of the tests if, uh, if necessary. To add a test to the execution plan, uh, it works in the same uh, as, as for the, the association between uh, requirement and uh, test cases. We have on the, on the right of, of the screen um, the test case library that, uh, that appears, and we just have to drag and drop some, some tests uh, on this execution plan to, uh, to add them. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this right now. 
And if we have several uh, data sets uh, in, a, in a test case, it will, uh, it will be added uh, one time for each, uh, each data set. So I had two data sets on my, uh, on my test here. It has been added twice on the, on the execution plan. And then to run a test uh, from, uh, from here, we have uh, this uh, play button here that will give us several options. So we can uh, run a test uh, using uh, an execution pop-up. So we already had this, uh, this feature before. Uh, it's, it works pretty much the same. So we have a new uh, window that, uh, that appears. And we have a, a like kind of a, a step zero here where we will see the objectives of the, of the test and, not, and also its uh, prerequisite. Um, when we when we are done with the with the prerequisites, uh, we can start here the test, and we will have uh, one uh, one screen for each uh, each steps, and so for each steps we'll see the action, the expected results, uh, additional information if uh, if there are some uh, attachments, uh, for example, we will both we will be able to uh, to add comments if necessary. And the idea is to uh, then to, to, to run the test and to apply um, an execution uh, status for each step. So whether it's passed, it's failed, uh, it's blocked, we also have uh, additional uh, statuses here. And let's say, for example, uh, we at one point uh, we find a, a, an issue. Uh, while uh, running the, the test. So Squash doesn't come with its own bug tracker, but we can link uh, uh, Squash to uh, pretty much uh, uh, the, the main bug trackers uh, on the market, like uh, Jira, uh, Redmine, uh, GitLab, Mantis, and uh, I, I forgot some. Uh, it's, it's on our, our website. So uh, when this uh, when Squash is linked to a to a bug tracker, uh, we have this uh, panel here uh, issue, uh, and from there we can uh, report a new issue or uh, attach uh, an existing issue uh, that already exists in the in the bug tracker. And when we click on report a new issue, uh, we have the um, the view of the of the issue uh, that comes from the bug tracker that is displayed here. So we just have to field. Uh, to fill the, the, the fields, and, uh, and then we can uh, click Add, and uh, it uh, adds a new, uh, a new issue directly on the, on the bug tracker. But we can do everything from scratch. We don't have to go to the, to the bug tracker to do that. Uh, so I'm going to stop the execution and close it. So we have the, the information of the, of the set, execution status on the on the execution plan, it's right here. We can also uh, go to to see uh, to consult a, a past execution uh, here by clicking on the on the date, on the execution date, and from here we'll be able to have all the info about uh, uh, the execution of uh, each step. So I think that's it for the uh, campaigns workspace. Um, we are going to take a look at the reporting workspace. Um, so from here, we can track all the uh, testing uh, process with uh, several type of uh, indicators. So we can create custom charts. We can create uh, reports, uh, book, book type reports. Um, we can create custom dashboards uh, and custom exports, uh, campaigns exports. So it works the same uh, as before. Uh, the, the big change here uh, is the uh, how to, to create a, a custom chart. Before it was with a, with a wizard uh, with several steps. Um, we've completely remade the, this feature. Uh, it's, it now looks like a, a workbench. Uh, we, we don't have a, a wizard anymore. Um, and the idea is on the, on the left side, we have all the criteria uh, to, to create the chart. So the perimeter, the uh, type of, uh, of chart, uh, the axes, uh, the, the filters. 
on the center, we have uh, the overview of, uh, of the charts. Uh, and on the right, we have the list of attributes uh, that uh, we can uh, create the, the chart with. So let's say we want to create a chart uh, about the status of the, of the test cases. So we are going to find test case here and status. And to create the chart, we just have to drag and drop uh, the, the attribute on the, um, on the center. And we uh, directly have the, uh, the overview uh, and so that we know what we are creating. So this is the, the, the chart about the, the, the test case status. And if we want to, we can add some uh, filters. So if we just want to uh, do a chart about uh, the status uh, under review or approved, we can do it. The chart uh, updates automatically here. So we know, we really know what we are doing. And then if we want to change the, the type of chart, uh, we can do it. And we now have a, a, an histogram type, a type of chart. And so it's dynamic, a bit like the research. With it. That's a feature that already existed, but that we've made it, tried to make it more uh, ergonomic. To finish, uh, maybe a quick word uh, about the administration workspace. Um, we can now access uh, the different section uh, directly from the navigation bar. We don't have to navigate to a specific uh, page uh, in the administration. Um, so when we uh, go to the to the administration to the administration workspace, we have a specific navbar where we will be able to access the different section of the, the administration. Uh, from there, we will be able to manage users, projects, uh, custom fields, uh, custom lists. We have several customization uh, available um, linked to uh, other tools like uh, bug trackers, automation tools, and also the, all the system parameters uh, to, um, to personalize uh, Scratch TM. So that's it for the, for the demo. I think there are some questions on the chat, so I'm going to try to answer it now. OK, so the first question is the screenshot uh, CTRLV works directly now. So it's for the, I think you're talking about the uh, rich text fields, if I'm not mistaken, uh, whether or not we can add uh, images directly in those fields with uh, the shortcuts. Um, so this. Uh, type of rich, rich text field it's, is the same as, as uh, before, as in the previous versions. So it should work the same. So uh, this, uh, this um, uh, copy paste uh, in, this, uh, in this type of fields depend on the browser you're, uh, you're using. I think it works with uh, Firefox, uh, but not with, uh, with Chrome. Uh, with Edge, uh, I don't know with Edge, uh, I'm not sure. And this new version uh, doesn't work with the uh, Internet Explorer. I mean, it has a, maybe it works, but it hasn't been tested. The um, uh, supported browser are Google Chrome, uh, Firefox, and, uh, and uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, will it be possible to uh, copy a data set? Uh, so it's not possible uh, in this version. As, as I said at the beginning of the demo, it's uh, pretty much the same feature as before. We just try to improve some uh, ergonomics and some, some features. This one will be a new feature. It's on uh, our backlog, but I, I can't tell you when, when it will be uh, available. Will it be possible to move an execution from an iteration to another? No, it won't be. Uh, I'm not sure why you would want to do this. Uh, it's, it's not planned to, to, to do it. If there are several parameters in the same step, the number of test cases corresponds to the scalar product of the different data sets. So if you have several uh, parameters in the, uh, in the same steps, 
you will have, uh, well, they will display, it's, uh, well, I have an example here, I think, pass, login and password in the same step, yeah. So I, I have login and password in the same step. Um, they are viewed like two different parameters, so this display in, uh, as, uh, as columns here. And then I will just have to add a, a data set and type a, a value for each parameter. So. Uh, it, it depends on the number of your data set, but it, it will count. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but <laughs> but uh, I think it, it will just count as one data set. Uh, I mean, it depends of, of the number of your of your data set. It won't multiply. Are the failed uh, tests in the first iteration automatically put in the next uh, iteration? Uh, no, uh, not automatically. Uh, but you can do it very easily. So we have uh, wizards uh, to help you uh, create new iteration from another. And from with, with this wizard, you can uh, select uh, easily all the failed uh, test cases, all the test cases linked to a bug, for example. But you also can do it with the, with the search feature. Uh, where you can easily research from an iteration all the failed uh, test cases and put them in the, in the new iteration. So it's not automatic, but it's, you can do it uh, pretty, uh, pretty easily. Uh, is there a functionality to export test book in Word Office? Uh, so in the reporting workspace, we have a report uh, feature, uh, add a report feature. And those are mostly book reports. And so from there, you can download uh, either PDF kind of uh, reports or Word kind, uh, kind of reports. And so we have a specific uh, SKS report in editable format. And the editable format is a, is a Word format. So we have this. Uh, we already have this uh, this feature. And to export a test report uh, in Word or Excel. So we have. Uh, so we also have. Do I have it here? Uh, we have campaign uh, reports or iteration report. So it's also a Word format uh, kind of kind of uh, document. Uh, where we'll, you will be able to export the, the statistics of a, a campaign it, uh, or iteration, the list of uh, issues, uh, the test cases that have been run on the, on the campaign or iteration. And for campaigns and iteration, we also have a um, custom export feature uh, where you can export in, uh, I think it's CSV format, uh, you can export a campaign uh, or iteration, and you can choose which uh, information you want to to export, and uh, that includes the, the list of, uh, of course, the list of test cases, their status, uh, etc. So you have several options for 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 this feature. So two questions: Can we set the the width of the columns. So, first question: uh, We will be able to do uh, to do it on the 3.0 version that will be available at the end of the year. So we can we can't do it now on the on, on this version that I'm uh, presenting you today, but uh, it will it will be available in a, in about a month uh, a month and a half. And the other question, uh, we can uncheck the research project uh, at one. Um, no, we can't do it right now, but we, we will add it. Uh, yeah, to have a check all and check all uh, option here. Uh, it's not available right now, but we'll be able to, to add it in, uh, in uh, next uh, versions of, uh, of Squash TM. Uh, is there a versioning of test cases? Uh, no, there, there are no, uh, no versioning uh, of test cases. Uh, what we recommend right now is to, to create a, a, new, uh, a new test case and uh, archive the, the, the other one, uh, put it in a specific folder, for example. Well, Thank you very much, Marion, and thank you for all your all of your questions. I'm so I apologize for the beginning of the webinar where 
uh, it seems you you didn't uh, listen to me right i hope it's better now uh, and i hope we we answers all the uh, all your questions about squash uh once more i i tell you you can uh, send us your, your eventual question uh, after the webinar on our uh, uh, email address. And uh, just to add also that this webinar will be replayed on uh, our YouTube uh, channel. And uh, you can find already a lot of uh, more content about um, uh, about Squash Atom, uh, for instance, uh, on our YouTube channel. Maybe we will uh, show you uh, another version of uh, Squash Atom or Squash DevOps uh, soon in english and uh, i hope uh, you don't have uh, any other question if uh, if so uh, we will stay just a couple of minutes uh, now but uh, thank you for uh, for your listening and uh, hope uh, hope to see you uh, soon uh, on, uh, on a new webinar or uh, on our uh, website squashtest.com but it seems we don't have uh, we don't have a uh, more question. So thank you. Thank you very much to everyone and uh, see you soon for another webinar. Thanks everyone. Bye.